In this video, I'm going to show you how I typically manage my environment variables in a development environment. And this will get your application ready for production as well. So I have this module installed called config. And if you have the config module installed, you can create a folder in the application's root directory called config. And inside of that folder, you can create some default config. You can also create a file for different environments as well. So I can make a new file here for my test environment. And I can make a new file here for production. And these can be some default configurations for these environments here. The problem with this is that I have a private key here and this private key is potentially sensitive. And so I don't want to commit this and push it up to my remote origin. So to fix this, we can combine config with .env. So let's install .env with yarn add .env. And once .env is installed, we can import it into our root file here. So I can import .env from .env. And then I need to import this actually before the config module. And then I need to call .env.config. And then I can go ahead and create a .env file. So I can create a new file. Call this .env. And now I can go into my default. And I can take my private key. And I can put this in my .env file. So I'm going to call this private key is equal to. And then I'm going to have to format this private key. So to format a private key inside of a .env file, you do a backslash n for a new line. Put this after each line. And then you can go ahead and put this all on a single line. So now we need a way to map this variable here, private key, to this one here that's called private key, but in camel case. So I'm going to remove this private key here, and then I'm going to create a new file inside of config called custom environment variables.ts. I'm going to export default, and I'm going to have a key. So the key is going to be whatever is in my default config, so I'm going to call this private key. And then it's going to be whatever it should get out of process.env. So in our case here, it's going to be private key. Let's put that there. Now we can kill our server. Beyond dev again. And if we come back into our app, I can type console.log config.get. And we want to get our private key variable here. So you can see here that private key has still logged to the console. And this private key is coming from our .env file. So there's one caveat with this, and this is if you're using Boolean data types. And you'll just need to format them into JSON. So let's say I have a variable here, and I'm going to call this use database, and I'm going to default this to false. So inside of my custom environment variables, I'm going to have one variable here called use database, and I'm going to make this equal to an object. I'm going to give it a property of underscore underscore name, and the environment variable name is going to be use underscore database, and then I'm going to give it another property, and this is going to be underscore underscore format, and the format here is going to be JSON. So if we didn't do this, and we put use database inside of our environment variables, then it would become a string. And a string is always truthy. So let's try this out. So I'm going to console.log type of use database. So you can see here that use database is type boolean. But if you come into custom environment variables, and I just changed this to a string here. You can see here, use database is a string, and this is not what we want because it will always be true 
and you'll be very confused as to why it's always true. So that is how I typically set up my environment variables in my development environment. So this is another video that has been requested by the members of the Tom Does Tech Discord. If you'd like to request videos, please make sure you've joined the Discord. You'll find the invite link in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.